بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم يقول الحق تبارك وتعالى كما في سورة الجن وأن المساجد لله وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعوا مع الله أحدا فلا تدعوا مع الله أحدا الله تبارك وتعالى إن سورة الجن سيس that the masajid are for Allah therefore do not call upon anyone but Allah do not call upon anyone along with Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala we started the discussion of this beautiful topic and important topic of the masjid last night. We tried to explain the meaning of the ayah we read in Surah to Tawbah, ayah number 18. Inna ma ya'muru masajid Allahi manamana billah. In this ayat, the ayah in Surat At-Tawbah, the ayah in Surat Al-Jinn, both show how important the masjid is. And both show that these are places that are for Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And no one is to be invoked, called in those places but Allah Taala. And if we know that a place is Allah's, then the, the respect for that place is of extreme importance, is a must. We talked a little bit about the adab one should have when it comes to the masajid. And that begins with the respect of the place. Because respecting the masjid is respecting Allah. Disrespecting the masjid is disrespecting Allah Ta'ala. As we said yesterday, whoever loves Allah loves Allah's masjid. We love our houses. Why? Because they are our houses. And who do we should love most? Ourselves or Allah? As we said yesterday, the Prophet ﷺ said one of the three things he mentioned that are the signs of Iman. Three things, if one has in them, then one has tasted the sweetness of Iman. Number one was to love Allah and His Messenger more than anything else more than anyone else. And if we love Allah, we love what Allah loves. The friend of our friend is our friend. And the friend of our enemy is our enemy. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Asidatna Aisha radiallahu anha said, Amara Rasulullah 
صلى الله عليه وسلم بالمساجد أن تبنى في الدور وأن تطهر وتطيب. That the Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم commanded that the masajid to be built in our houses and to be cleaned and perfumed. So the play the masjid has to be the the cleanest, can we say the cleanest or the most clean? clean. The cleanest place mm. on earth because it is the house of Allah. And it is the command of Allah that we take care of the masjid. Many of us, we don't care whether the masjid is taken care of or no. We just come. We pray, use the bathroom. Sometimes we find the bathroom dirty. We say, brother, why the bathroom is like this? Not knowing that it is our place, all of us. If we find the bathroom of the masjid like that, before we call upon anyone, we need to t take care of it. We need to know that if I find my house dirty, it's not upon someone else to clean, but it is my responsibility. And this is the house of Allah Taala. Sometimes we just come, we think everything is okay, the masjid is clean, everything is there, you know. But it's the efforts of all of us for the masjid to be clean, for the masjid to be taken care of. Many of us, The masjid has an owner. That is Allah, and its owner will take care of it. Yes, Allah takes care of the masjid through us. So the cleanliness of the masjid and the good care of the masjid is our responsibility. Because Allah says, "Fi buyutin adin Allahu anturfa." Houses Allah Taala has given the idn that they are raised. We raised them, building them, but we raised them by taking care of the inside and the outside of it. Raising the masjid is respecting the masjid. No dirt is to be seen in the masjid. Anything that is not to be there has to be removed by us. And it is not among the signs of respecting the masjid, leaving dirt in the masjid, or throwing dirt down there. That is even worse. We just have something and we put it somewhere at the masjid and we go. Look this hadith of the Prophet Look at it. He said, "Uribat aliyah, amalu ummati." The actions of my ummah has have been presented before me. Hasanuha wa sayyuha. The good of their actions and the bad of their actions. Fa wajat tuvi ma hasini amaliha. Part of the good things I found in the A'mal of my Ummah is the fact that harmful objects are removed from the path. If Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala rewards us for removing harmful aspects, objects from the path. If Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala commands us to clean the street, to clean everywhere, how about his house, the masjid? The, the, mas the cleaning of the masjid is so important that one of the sisters in Medina who used to come and clean the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam 
After a while, he did not see the sister that used to come clean the masjid. He asked, wow, where is she? Maybe the prophet traveled and he came back. He did not find her. Maybe he was busy doing other things. But for a couple of, for some time, he did not realize, he did not see this sister who used to clean the masjid. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa wa asked, what happened to her? Where is she? They said she died. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to the sahaba, what? She died. And they buried her. He said, Afala adhantumuni. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you inform me? Now many people in Medina died. The Prophet said, Medina is a big city, thousands of people. We cannot go to all the janazas. But this sister that used to come to clean the masjid, her janazah is not like every other one's janazah. Why didn't you tell me? And then he said, Dulluni, show me ala qabriha. Show me where her qabr is. And the Sahaba took the Prophet ﷺ to the graveyard to perform Salatul Janazah for this sister after she was buried. The Prophet ﷺ made the janazah for this sister in her grave. Why? Because the fact that she used to take care of the masjid. So beloved brothers and sisters, the masjid is a house of worship. It should be cleaned, should be taken care of, and more than that, should be respected by not making it a place of jokes, a place of backbiting, a place of, you know, arguing. When we come to the masjid, many of us, you know, argue with one another. Some people, they argue in the masjid and they come to the masjid, make salat in the masjid, and they do not give salam to each other. We witness that. People who come to the masjid and pray to the masjid because of an argument, they stop giving salam to one another. Ignoring that the Prophet says that two Muslims cannot abandon one another for more than three days. What is that hadith? Prophet says his our actions are shown, are presented to him on the night of every Thursday and Monday. If he sees that so and so is doing good, he's happy, alhamdulillah. If he sees that so and so is doing bad, he asks for forgiveness. Except for two people who abandon one another. Their goodness is held. إليه يرفع الكلم الطيب إليه يسعد الكلم الطيب والعمل الصالح يرفعه والعمل الصالح يرفعه. But al mutahajiran كأن عملهما ليس بصالح لكي يرفع. يوقف وقفهم إنهم مسؤول. And when we are in the masjid, the time we are here waiting for salah, it is not a free time that we can do whatever we want. We want to utilize that time, making dhikr, making tasbih, making istighfar, making salat ala nabi, making la ilaha illallah. Because waiting for salah is itself salah. You finish the salah, waiting for the next salah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطُ فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطُ فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطُ That's a riba. The masjid is where all our solutions are to be, our, our problems are to be solved. 
where our worries are to be removed. So when you are in the masjid, you know that we are in the house of our Lord, in the palace of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And we also want to know whether the masjid needs our services. We don't wait until we are asked. It is ours, all of us. As the Prophet said, Man lam yahtamma bi umuril muslimina, ha laysa minhum. And the best affair of the Muslims is the place where the Muslims make sujood. Masjid, a place of, of sujood. As I said yesterday, the Prophet ﷺ, when he arrived at Medina, the first thing that he did was to build a masjid. To build the masjid. So we want to come more to the masjid and pray more at the masjid. I'm not saying more at the masjid, but trying to pray our daily prayers in the masjid. إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ الرَّجُلَ يَعْتَادُ الْمَسْجِدَ فَشْهَدُوا لَهُ بِلِمَانِ If you see a man frequenting the masjid, bear witness that he is a, he's a believer. And Allah did not say that the Muslims are the ones who take care of the masjid, but the believers, he said. إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَا Because not every Muslim is a mu'min. قَالَتِ الْأَعْرَابُ آمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُ The Arab say, we have believed. Allah says, no, you haven't believed yet. قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُ وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا Say, we have, we have become Muslims. وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ وَيَقُلُوا بِكُمْ Iman has not reached your heart yet. وَإِن تُطِعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَا يَلِدْكُمْ مِنْ أَعْمَالِكُمْ شَيْءٍ Only our iman will be complete, will be strong, will be recognized by Allah when we obey Rasulullah. And the Prophet used to come to the masjid even when he was very sick. The Prophet used to come to the masjid. Ali would take him, decide, and Sayyidina Abbas, the other side, and they would help him go to the masjid. Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And our prayer here in the masjid with the jama'ah is equal to 27 prayers we do by ourselves in our houses. Do we want to neglect that? Do you want to regret the day regret will not benefit, will be of no use? The day of Walim, Ya Abdu Walim Ala Yadeh, saying, Ya Laitani, I wish I did not take so and so as friend. I wish I took the Prophet as my friend. If the Prophet is our friend, as I said earlier, we love what the Prophet loved, alayhi salatu wasalam. The Prophet once said, I wish I had someone. I wish I had someone to lead the prayer. And I go to the houses of those who do not come to make it in the masjid, to the masjid, and burn their houses on them. We don't want to be part of those. The Prophet does not do that, but he wants to tell us that that's what they deserve. If you don't have equal, you know, uh, an excuse that is valid. Imam Malik, for years, he believed, he said, that if one does not pray in the masjid, one doesn't have a prayer. Because of the hadith, La salata li jaril masjidi, la vil masjidi, la li until he said he saw the comparison between one prayer in the masjid with jama'ah and the prayer that is performed by oneself alone. He said, because there is comparison, then this is valid. 
May Allah Ta'ala make it easy for all of us. May Allah make it easy for all of us. So Al-Masjid Al-Masjid. Al-Masjid Al-Masjid. Al-Jama'at Al-Masjid. Al-Jama'at Al-Masjid. And when we are in the Masjid, we make more, so, you know, we, we feel the presence of Allah. And the Masjid is a place of dhikr, especially in Ramadan. Ibn Qayyim Rahmatullah alayhi said, أفضل السوام أكثرهم ذكرا لله في صومه The best of the fasting people are those who uh, mention, who remember Allah Ta'ala most during their, their fasting times. During their fasting times. So dhikr is to be done all the times. Especially in the masjid. Allah says, وَيُذْكَرَ فِي أَسْمُ Especially during this month of dhikr, because dhikr is one of the names of the Quran, and the best form of dhikr is to grasp the book and read. Allah Taala calls His book a dhikr. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr. Verily, we sent down a dhikr. That is the name of the Quran. Wa inna lehu lhafidh. That's in Surah Al-Hijr. In Surah Al-Qalam, He said. وَإِنْ يَكَادُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيَزْلِقُونَكَ بِعَبُ صَارِهِمْ لَمَّا سَمِعُوا الذِّكْرِ وَيَقُولُونَ إِنَّهُ لَمَجْنُونَ وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِ And in Surah Al-Zukhruf, he said, وَإِنَّهُ لَذِكْرٌ لَكَ وَلِقَوْمِكَ This book is a dhikr for you and for your people, O Muhammad alayhi wa sallam. And he said, وَمَنْ يُعْرِدْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ In the same surah. نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا وَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِنْ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يَصُدُّونَهُمْ عَنِ السَّبِيلِ وَيَحْسِبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُتَّدُونَ حَتَّى إِذَا جَانَا قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكَ بُعْدَ الْمَشْرِقَيْنِ فَبِيسَ الْقَرِنْ وَلَنْ يَنْفَعَكُمُ الْيَوْمَ إِذْ ظَلَمْتُمْ أَنَّكُمْ فِي الْعَذَابِ مُشْتَرِكُمْ Whoever abandons the dhikr of Allah, the Quran, Allah says, we leave you with shaitan. No one can be independent. Whether we come to the masjid or somewhere else. Whether we are in a place where Allah Ta'ala likes us to be, loves us to be, or the opposite. Whether we are with Allah or with someone else. With Allah or with shaitan. If you don't busy yourself with good, your nafs will make you busy with evil. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ Whoever turns back his, turns, his, uh, gives my ذِكْرِ his back, meaning turns away from my ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً طَنْقَةً Whoever turns away from the Qur'an, his life is going to be a miserable life, says Allah. وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى And when he comes to me to meet me on the day of judgment, he will come blind. Because whoever does not read the Quran doesn't have an eye. He doesn't deserve eyes. قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا ذَنَّسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى وَكَذَلِكَ نَجِزِي مَا نَسْرَى وَلَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ وَلَعَذَابُ الْآخِرَةِ أَشَدُّ وَأَبْقَى So I recommend and advise myself and all of you to take care, more care of the masjid. To be at the, in the masjid more frequently. To think about the masjid more and more and more and more. You all know we have been here for almost 10 years renting. This building you see here in the lot is for sale. And the owner is a Muslim. And he's ready to make a good deal for us. We spoke with him earlier today. So there was time we wanted to buy this building. It was very cheap. And we tried our best. We couldn't. Until it's gone. You know? And the same deal, or, or almost the same deal, we're having here. 
I'm sharing it with you and the guy is asking for 800, 8,000, how do you call it? 850,000. 850,000. For the building and the lot. Before. It's like two lands. Two lands. And we can do a lot down there. You know, whatever we do, we want, we can, let us do it. And if we don't have, it doesn't mean that we cannot do anything. We can share the word with someone else we think can help. 850,000 is not a lot of money. You know, for this place, you have the parking, you have the building, you have the land, you can transform, you can do it. So inshallah, let us try our best. And this is the month of Ramadan, the month of generosity. Generosity is to give what we have and to help others give what they have. It is the month that the Prophet wasallam, the peak of generosity used to be more generous even. I don't, I don't, I cannot, when I read the hadith of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas describing the generosity of the Prophet I have a hard time grasping it. Because he said the Prophet was the most generous of men. His generosity was like a blowing wind, meaning it doesn't leave anything. There is nothing you ask the Prophet except he gave. There is nothing he knew you would want to have except he gave. He didn't keep anything with him. Yet, he was more generous in Ramadan when he read the Quran with Jibreel. So we read the Quran in Ramadan because the, this is the month of Ramadan. It's the month of Quran, even after Ramadan, but in Ramadan especially. So our generosity should be increased. So I'm inviting everyone to be part of this beautiful project. You know, to stop renting and get a place for this community. The community deserves it. Our, the future generations deserve it. Insha'Allah Ta'ala, with a good niyyah and good intention, we all can do it. And it is easy, bi-ithnillahi ta'ala wa ta'ala. May Allah Ta'ala make us among the people of the masjid. Among the people of the Qur'an. Among the people of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May our legacy be the legacy of the shuhada, of siddiqin, of salihin. May Allah heal our hearts, our souls. May Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala reside in our hearts. May Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala reside in our souls. Whatever we have, may we have Allah. And whatever we don't have, may we not lose Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. May Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq to fulfill his rights during this month of Ramadan. In all the months beyond in our lifetime. أسأل الله لنا ولكم حسن الخاتمة والثواب والمغفرة ومجاورة مولانا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في على علي بلا عقاب ولا حساب ولا مشقة مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين. Yeah.